Well, if you knew you had only a few years to live, how would you use that time? My guest has learned many lessons about life in the valley. Beth Chilcote is eager to share what she and her husband David learned during their three-year journey with ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Married 37 years. Mm -hmm. Welcome Thank from you. Columbus. Now Thank my first question, Beth, yes. really and truly, did David ask 200 times <laughs> before you said, I do? Look at these children. Yes, we were just, we, it was almost like we were just kids. So young. Yes. Um, he really did ask 200 times, but most of it was a joke. He knew I was going to say yes. Um, the, the real dispute on it was he wanted to get married before I did. I wanted to finish college and, and, and I didn't, and, and so it became sort of a joke because he would call me and ask me, you know, would you marry me today? And I'm like, no, no, you know, so. He knew what the issue he, was. Yeah, it wasn't, it, it, I, I laugh and we left it that way in the book, but I am asked that question occasionally because I, I, he knew I was going to say yes, so. A lot of laughter, a lot of joy. Yes, yes. A happy family, four children. Yes, yes. And, and now nine grandchildren. Yes. Yeah, actually, um, let's have a picture right out of the gate. Yeah, here we look like a big your mob. Entire yeah, tribe. that's us. That's our mob. Now, at this point, <coughs> David is in a wheelchair. Yeah. It started with a yearly physical. Yes, he um, he was a very athletic, um, healthy guy. Looked way younger than his 55 years, and um, he was uh, had been working in the gym and said that his uh, foot was not. It just there was some tendon or something might be wrong. He was headed into the doctor for a physical and went in, and um, the doctor even was just a little suspicious, but sent us on to an orthopedic person. But then it went from there to a neurologist, and and um, it was not a, a tendon problem. It, it, and he was starting started to have um, ab abdominal cramping, um, just some other cramping issues in his feet, and eventually, uh, after much testing, we were, we were told the devastating news that he had ALS. Now, you say devastating. I, one of the first responses of a man who chose to journal, something mm -hmm. you recommend mm -hmm. to people, not just the one suffering the, the illness, but those involved in the crisis. Yes, I do. I really do. It, it when we first started journaling, when when we we were thinking, oh, isn't this nice that we get to see God use this to good, so that we can reach out to other people and tell them how good God is. But it, one day, it was just like you know, it, it was like the dawn dawning of the, the fact that we realized how much it had helped us, mm -hmm. because every week we we were we were discussing it. We were saying, you know, what are we seeing God do this week? What what can we what can be put down on paper that He's doing? So we were looking for it, and and we were so much more aware, oh my goodness, look how God did this, or, or look how God saw us through that crisis. And so, um, you know, it, it, was, it was very helpful. Did I actually uh, record David's words here, that the essence of it was a uh, new adventure. God is taking us on a new adventure. Yes. And he was eager to see how God would be glorified. Yes, he, he really was. I think, I think, that it was because he walked with God a lot of years. And I mean, I, I don't think he would have had that response had he been a 25 year old kid or a 30 year old person. But I think he had, he had walked and spent so much time with God and seen God be faithful and knew God very well um, through his personal relationship. Um, so I think he was to the point where he could have that confidence in God that whatever God gives us, he will see us through and he'll use it to good. Um, it's kind of neat to read that the Christian doctor put, puts a little cross where he identifies yeah. that his patient is a believer and there was no discovery to be made here with David. It was just <laughs> right there out of the gate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's a man who He didn't knows hold much Lord. back. He kind of <laughs> said whatever he was thinking. Well, you two were both involved in Young Life. I'm sure many of our viewers have heard of this wonderful ministry to young, my brother-in-law was saved, came to know Christ through Young Life and is involved with them in Connecticut. You guys, 25 years? Yeah. No, well, no. It, not that long. Well, he was on staff for 10. 10. But really, uh, he went back to law school after that. And But even as an attorney, all the years he was an attorney, he was still on the boards and he was still speaking places and he was still very much involved. And the impact in your life is pretty significant. It was wonderful. I, um, I had... Uh, 
grown up in a church setting, sort of had that be good mentality and thought there must be more to this. And so I had finally got up the nerve and had gotten up the nerve and had got, asked my um, youth pastor, I was a teenager and I asked my youth pastor, what, what is truth? Oh, and, what a question. And I thought, oh, this is gonna be, I'm waiting for this incredible answer. And he said, uh, truth is wherever you find it. And I remember oh. just walking away like, okay, there is there is no answer to that. Nobody knows, even the religious guys don't know the answer to that. But then that same year, Young Life began in Rochester, New York, where I came from, and in my high school, and I remember coming to a Young Life club and sitting at the feet of this guy who really only gave a 15 minute, very simplistic talk, but I remembered thinking, there it is at the foot of the cross of Christ, there it is. And nothing has been the same since. Nothing has been the same since. You say, I learned that I was not just married to a really good guy, but a remarkable man of faith. Yeah, that's true, that's and very true. That's the richness of nobody tells a dying guy to shut up.